So it's been about six months since the release of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a comparison to see which console comes out on top. Both consoles are still incredibly hard to find. You can't go wrong with either or console, major leap compared to its predecessor. All right, first up, we have the controllers. Which controller is better? The Xbox Series X controller is basically the same exact controller as the Xbox One. So all of your older accessories will work. So if you have a scuff or a pro controller, it will work just fine on the Series X or S. And that's a good thing, but it's a bad thing because it's the same old design, but it's something that you're familiar with. Now I skipped the Xbox One series. I hadn't had an Xbox since the 360. So it was really good to be back on Team Xbox. I always love the Xbox controller. It just feels so much better in the hand. Now when I had the 360, I hated the D-pad. And it's good to see Microsoft making some improvements to the D-pad now. I like the analog stick alignment. It just feels natural. The bumpers is a little bit of a distance when you take your finger off the trigger. Not really my cup of tea. But then what's new about this controller, you have a share button. So you can upload screenshots to Xbox Live or should I say Xbox Network. And also you have this Type-C port compared to Micro on the Xbox One. And of course, you still have your AA batteries present here. Give or take, some people hate, some people love. Um, it's a good thing, but I just wish Microsoft would include a battery pack instead of batteries. But overall, this is a very comfortable controller. Nice ergonomics. It just feels good in the hand. Shout out to Flossy Carter. Now, take a look at the DualSense. Now, this is jam-packed of features. You have the touch bar, the light bar around the touch bar. You have a speaker, a microphone, so you could talk to your friends without getting your actual headset. And you have your LED for your mute, so this is how you're gonna mute your mic. Now, I like the bumpers better on the DualSense. You have your options button on the top right while you have your create button on the left side. PlayStation always gets it right with a D-pad. I just love playing fighting games on PlayStation controllers versus Xbox. And then the highlight of this controller, you have the haptics. So the same haptics found on modern smartphones, you have the same technology present on the DualSense. So if you're firing a gun, it's gonna give you the illusion that you're firing a gun. Or even if you're underwater, you might, the controller might vibrate along with the waves of the water. So it's just gonna feel more realistic and it's gonna enhance your gaming experience. And to go alongside with that, you have the adaptive triggers. That trigger is gonna actually feel like a gun trigger. Um, it feels weird, you'll get used to it, but for competitive games, I wouldn't really recommend having it on because I feel like that's gonna lower your response time. But if you play in single player games and you just wanna relax, then yeah, you can have that on. I, I love that enhancement, the attention to detail that PlayStation put into the DualSense. It's just an immersive experience that you have with the DualSense compared to the Xbox Series X. But Comfort wise, I still love the Xbox controller. This controller feels super comfortable. So now with that aside, let's talk about the console design. I remember Austin Evans breaking down the Xbox Series X and I was like, man, you know, seeing all the components and then we see a little bit of the UI. That was one year ago. That's hard to believe that. And then seeing the PS5, seeing that for the first time, everybody was jaw drop. It looks gorgeous, it looks like a spaceship. It looks futuristic. I was saying right from the rip, PlayStation is the better looking console, but actually having the Series X right here, it's bold, minimalistic design, matte black finish, and the green aesthetics on the top. You will get fingerprints if you're touching it like me. And most importantly, this console will look good on any furniture set that you put it into any room. It's just gonna blend in perfectly. Unlike the PS5, you know, you gotta really make room for this because as you guys can see, it's a little taller, and especially if you're gonna lay it down flat. But the aesthetics of the PS5, Sony really did outdone themselves. This time, you have like these side panels with the centerpiece lighting up on the side, super futuristic. You have your iconic PlayStation logo, I retrofy this. And then even if you look very closely to the face plates or the side plates, I should say, you even see some of the PlayStation logos on there too. So the attention to detail on here is just remarkable. Now, obviously I do have the digital edition. You do have the regular PS5. I do have that one. That one, I'm not really a fan of that design. I love the digital edition. It's just this unified design. It just looks so sleek. You have this nice curvature, so it position it to be a V. The V is a Roman number of uh, five. So I just love the design. So easily, design-wise, I'm giving it to the PS5. And this is just a monumental console, especially if you're gonna stand it up. Now, taking a look at the user interface, the UI. This is the language of the consoles. 
right when you boot it up, if you don't understand to get the point A to point B or if it's confusing, that could really turn you off for that console. And I would say both user interfaces are fairly straightforward. The Xbox could be a little bit jumbled, but it's very easy to get the point A to point B. You have all of your recent games on the top, and then if you wanna see all your games, you can go down and then you can see your game library. And if you press Y, you can search universally. So anything that's on the Microsoft store or your games that's installed, it's pretty interesting how you can purchase headsets. You can even purchase the storage expansion card on your console. That's pretty unique. Now on the PlayStation side, it's still easy. Right when you boot up your console, you're gonna see the news for the day and then you just present it with your home screen. You see what game you wanna play, you press the X button and you play in the game, that's it. Then if you press R1 or if you hover over to the media tab, you're presented with all of your media apps. So very simple on both consoles, but if you have an Xbox One, it's gonna be very disappointing to see the same old user interface. I don't know how I feel about that, but since this is my first Xbox since the Xbox 360, everything is fairly new to me. The PlayStation on the other hand is a completely new UI and it is 4K versus 1080p. But nonetheless, both consoles are very easy to get to your friends, get to the party. Let's talk about the features of both consoles. The Xbox is featuring Game Pass, you have Quick Resume, you have an insanely fast SSD, and then on top of that, you can expand the storage right from the rip. So right when you get your Xbox, you can expand the storage right away. Quick Resume is one of the best things ever. To be able to play a game, and then you shut down your console, you power it back on, you pick up where you left off, or even so, you go to another game and then you go back to the next game and then you go back to the pre... It works, it works. 90% of the time, sometimes it stumbles a little bit. Now on the other side of the coin, the PS5 features the faster SSD. So you have a faster SSD speed on the PS5 compared to the Xbox, but the Xbox is actually more powerful in terms of GPU and a little bit of the CPU performance compared to the PS5. Feature wise, everything comes down to the DualSense right here. Sony really did put all the efforts to the DualSense. You do have support for VR, that's definitely a big deal. VR 2 is coming. You have the media remote, you have the Pulse 3D headset, you have the charging dock, but Xbox, they did step up with their headset and that sounds phenomenal. It sounds way better than the Pulse 3D headset. I love the fact that you can customize the side plates, even though Sony hasn't really got around to making official side plates, but you do have a bunch of third party options there. So you can customize it way more than your Xbox, unless you debrand wrap this. You know, Xbox, you have that game pass, so you have access to hundreds of games right out the gate versus PlayStation, you have to buy some of those games. And yes, if you have a PS4, you can play most of those games on here. Let's talk about games. Games, that's the whole reason why we even buying these gaming consoles. The Xbox has been infamous of lacking games. You only have games like Halo, Forza, Gears, Fable, I guess you could throw that in there. But recently Xbox purchased Bethesda. So we may see a future Skyrim or Doom exclusively on Xbox. So that's unfortunate on the PlayStation side. You can download most of these games on your PC. And on the other side of the coin, you guys know, PlayStation has the games, yo. Games on top of games, man. Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Ratchet and Clank, God of War, just to name a few. And Sony can even take it back in time and bring back some older series like Twisted Metal or even SOCOM. And then we have some of the games that's not really games like Detroit Become Human, Heavy Rain. The list goes on and on for the PlayStation side. And then we have a game coming out this month actually called Returnal. Man, Sony, they got it. Backwards compatibility. PS5 doesn't support backwards compatibility unless it's a PS4 game. Like what? Imagine playing all your PlayStation games on the PS5. We need that, Sony, we need that. So I, I gotta tip my hat to Microsoft for allowing support for backwards compatibility. So the original Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and of course, Series X games. And then on top of that, sometimes Microsoft even enhanced those older games. Look at games like Red Dead Redemption on the Xbox 360. It has been completely optimized, 4K, enhanced visuals. Microsoft is killing backwards compatibility in a good way. They nailing it and they really set in a good example. And I hope Sony could be able to understand that we appreciate older games. And then even look at games like Warzone. 
Warzone supports 4K at 120 frames per second on the Xbox, while on the PS5 side is 4K, but it's not 120 frames. So for multi-platform games, it performs better on Xbox versus PlayStation. Playing Hitman 3, it runs better on the Xbox. You run native 4K versus some weird resolution on the PS5. So I think multi-platform games perform better on Xbox compared to PlayStation. All right, next up, let's talk about online or the community. We have Xbox Live, AKA Xbox Network versus PSN, PlayStation Network. Now I'm gonna go off the limb. Most of my friends are on PlayStation. So naturally I'm gonna play the PlayStation a little bit more compared to Xbox. Now thankfully crossplay is a thing. So if you play Warzone, I could face somebody on Xbox or even on PC which is pretty amazing, but only if the game supports it. The Wi-Fi antenna on the Xbox is a little older compared to the PS5, supporting Wi-Fi 6 versus Wi-Fi 5. Now, you guys probably not gonna care about that, especially if you're gonna only connect to ethernet, but that's very important to consider, especially if you're gonna have these consoles for like seven years or so. Now, unfortunately, both of these consoles, you have to pay to go online. I just, I can't stand that at all. Xbox had the audacity to increase the prices, you know, I don't know what they was thinking to increase it to $100 a year for the Xbox Live Gold. Now, meanwhile, both services offer free games monthly. Now that is the way that they justify, okay, well, you get free games every month. That's what you're really paying for in a sense. The game's been a hit or miss on the PlayStation side, but on the Xbox side, I really just don't care about the free games because we have Game Pass. Let's not forget, the Xbox 360 really did define online gaming, and I'll always respect Xbox for that. Both consoles handle online fairly well, way better than Nintendo. The only thing I'll say, both of these online services should be free, period. So the prize fight winner is the PS5. Shout out to Brian Tong, bring back prize fight, compare both these consoles. I've been watching prize fight when I was a little kid and now here I am comparing both the consoles. It's just so crazy to even think about that, but you cannot go wrong with either or console. And it all depends on where your friends are playing. But let's say you don't have any friends. Let's say you're just going off of just a solo experience. PlayStation, a lot of good single player games on PlayStation compared to just the Xbox. So thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below what you guys think. Drop a like on this video so this video could be pushed out. And make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on for more videos. Till next time. Have a simple day.